reminds us that there's not just a physical healing that needs to take place, but there's also a spiritual healing. And as I said, there, there was kind of two ways to look at this verse and interpret what James was saying. One is physical sickness. The other is spiritual sickness. And after studying this text this past week, I, I do lean towards translating this verse kind of like this. Is anyone weak spiritually? Let them call the elders of the church to pray. Because that word that's translated sick in this, in this James chapter 5 at least six other times in the Bible, it's, it's translated as weak. And so, in the context of this letter, I, I think it makes more sense to, to read weak spiritually as opposed to physically sick. Because, listen to the verse this way. Is anyone among you weak? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. And the Lord will raise them up. And if they have sinned, they will be forgiven. And with the intense pressure that the church was facing, with the intense persecution, the the stress that was put on these followers of Christ, it it wouldn't be any stretch to to think that they would be weak spiritually. The point of James' letter is to encourage the church facing this pressure to stay faithful to Christ to keep following Him, to be authentic with your faith, to endure until the end. Don't quit, church. And so if you find yourself feeling weak spiritually, don't go through this on your own. Call call the church leaders together and get them to pray for you. Why? Because prayer is how we respond to life. And we need to pray when life makes us week. James has said in verse 13, I know some of you are suffering, so pray. I know some of you are happy, so pray. But if any of you are weak, if you're feeling defeated, if you've been wounded on the battlefield, maybe persecution has made you weak and maybe in your weakness you've given in to sin, you're weak mentally, you're weak emotionally, you're physically weak, you're spiritually defeated. When life makes you weak, James says, go get some others who are strong and get them to pray for you. Get them to pray for you. And that makes sense because when we're weak, it's hard to pray for ourselves, isn't it? When we're spiritually weak, it's difficult to pray for ourselves. We need others around us who can help us and and pray for us and help us find that resource from God. God wants us to draw from the strength of others in times of weakness. And I know it's not easy to do this. We don't like to be vulnerable. We don't like to admit we are weak. But there is power and strength available from the Lord when our church family prays for us. And that's why James says in verse 16, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. And the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. We need to to share and to confess to one another. Now, I'm not saying we everybody come up here to the microphone and just put your dirty laundry out there for everybody to hear. That's not what I'm saying. What I think this verse is telling us is we need accountability in our life. We need those close Christian friends, those close brothers and sisters in Christ that, that we can confess our sins to. That we can say, I need you to pray for me. I am weak. I'm struggling in this area. We need that accountability in our life. Just this morning, I got in contact with a couple of my accountability partners. Because I said, guys, I'm really struggling. I said, I, to be honest, I don't even know if I should preach this morning. <laughs> I said, I'm, I'm weak. I need your prayer." There's strength and power that we get when we ask others to pray for us. We don't go through it on our own. We need God's resource. We need their prayers, or our, our church family's prayers. And check this out. The, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And James goes on to give us the example of Elijah. But look at verse 17. He says, Elijah was a human being, even as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. 
And it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. And again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. You can read about this in 1 Kings chapter 17 in the Old Testament of the Bible. Where Elijah went to King Ahab and said, Okay, because you're not worshiping God, because you're not following God, you're, you're worshiping these idols, it's not going to rain. You're, you're going to worship Baal, the Canaanite god of the thunderstorm. We'll show you who the real god of the thunderstorm is. Elijah prayed and it did not rain for three and a half years. Can you imagine? We, we've seen the effects of just a few months without rain. Can you imagine three and a half years without rain? And then in chapter 19 of 1 Kings, they have that showdown on top of Mount Carmel. Where the, they said, okay, the God that answers with fire, that's the true God. And God, of course, he answers with fire when Elijah prays. And then all the people say, the Lord, he is God. And he, he, Elijah tells Ahab, you better get home soon because it's going to rain. But isn't it good to know that Elijah was a human just like us? And when he prayed, and prayed earnestly, prayed for God to be glorified, he prayed it wouldn't rain. And for three and a half years, it didn't rain. And just think, what can God do in your life if we would pray? If you would pray earnestly, what could God do in your life? What would happen if we confessed our sins and we were healed? I think it would be good to kind of close this sermon out by praying for each other. I don't want us just to simply hear the word. I want us to also live the word, to be doers of the word and do what it says. Maybe you're here this morning and you're struggling. Life is difficult. You're under a tremendous amount of pressure. You're under a tremendous amount of stress. Is any of you in trouble? Let them pray. And maybe you're here this morning because life's been good. You're blessed. There's a song in your heart. And you're here this morning and you just can't help but say, Thank you, Lord. Is any of you happy? Let them pray. Maybe you're here this morning because you're weak. And you came in here this morning because honestly you didn't know where else to go. And it's a struggle. And you've been beat down. And you need to say, I need my church family to pray for me. If that describes you, would you uh, any of those describe you, would, would you raise your hand this morning? Is anyone in trouble? Is anyone happy? Is anyone weak? Yeah. But what I'd like to do, I don't know, I don't want this to be weird. <laughs> and you might be here, and I'm not even sure I believe in this God thing or prayer or whatever. I don't even know how to pray. <laughs> Relax. Prayer is just a conversation with God. But maybe to the person next to you, maybe just put your hand on their shoulder. Just let them know, I'm praying for you. Thank you. Now let's just take a few moments here. And let's pray. Because authentic followers of Christ respond to life by praying. Is anyone in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them pray. Is anyone weak? Let them pray. Let's pray for each other.